Hi everyone. Very good morning and welcome back to Cragreed B. So let's start. Today is the last session that we have today. Okay. So today is the last one. Uh, we are going to complete it uh, in very less time. There are organizations as well as two more important things that I needed to discuss today. And with that, the Ministry of Social Justice is going to be wrapped up. Fine. So first organization that we have right now is the National Scheduled Cast Finance and Development Corporation. So same, a similar kind of organization is working for backward classes. Similar kind of organization is working for the scheduled tribe as well. Similar kind of organization, not the same organization, right? So please remember this. This organization, let's see that what all does this organization does. Few of the important things we already know about it, but there are some factual details which you should be knowing, right? So it was set up in the year 1989. Now, this is the same year at which we have started with the procedure of having a National Commission of Scheduled Caste and Scheduled Tribes, right? So, under this, in 1989, it was started as a company not for profit under Section 8 of Companies Act 2013. Uh, section 8 and Section 25, I have told you repeatedly, right? These are the two, sec uh, two sections. Uh, Companies Act 1956 which was the older one that was having section 25 and the new Companies Act 2013 it is having a section 8 with it. Okay now let's see next is the objective of this particular organization is they want to provide the assistance loan related assistance as well as the uh, social development for the scheduled caste families who are having their annual income up to 3 lakhs. So understand this it has a network. Good morning. So it has a network, right? So it provides the support to the banks, financial institutions and those banks and financial institutions provide the support to the immediate family of the scheduled caste. So this is how this particular structure works. Assistance is assist the target group by way of loans, training, entrepreneurship development, marketing related support, right? As well as through channelizing agencies like public sector banks as well as the other institutions. The authorized capital is for 1500 crores, right? It provides loan up to the 90% of cost of project in all the schemes mentioned below at the lower interest rate. Now, let's see what are these particular schemes. The same thing, intra annual income of the scheduled caste people who are going to benefit from this particular scheme. Annual income should not be more than 3 lakh. Now, what are the schemes under which it provides up to the 90% of loan is? These are mentioned over here. We just have to understand the names of the scheme and that's it. So, Mahila Samriddhi Yojana, Mahila Kisan Yojana, Micro Credit Finance for Individuals as well as HSGs, Samriddhi Yojana, Lagu Vavsai Yojana, Ajivika Finance, Udyam Nidhi Yojana, etc. etc. For all such kind of loans, it provides 90% of the loan requirement. Fine. Now the balance 10% has to be provided by whom? Balance 10% needs to be brought up by the channelizing agencies in the form of loan, subsidy or other available resources of the fund. So this is how the funding happens. Now talking about the education loan scheme. We have talked about that the government is providing various kinds of scholarship etc. to the scheduled caste people. So now let's read about what all the education loan is about. See, so all of these are under the National Schedule Cars Finance and Development Corporation, right? Remember this. Education loan, it will be provided for the students who are pursuing regular professional as well as technical courses, which has been approved by the government. Up to 90% of the course, for course fee, that is or 10 lakh, whichever is left for students within India. And up to 90% of the course fee or 20 lakh rupees, whichever is less for the abroad students. So, the limit is changing because of the destination of your study. If you are studying for the higher studies in India, then we are going to provide you 90% of the course fee, but up to 10 lakh rupees, right? Whatever Indian norms are. And if you are going abroad, then this is the support that education loan related support that is going to be provided. Up to 10 years for loans up to 7.5 lakh and up to 15 years for loan above 7.5. 5 lakhs. So, this is the tenure of loan for how much time the loan has been granted. Next is green business scheme. 
Green business scheme means see all those businesses which are having a great impact on the environment or a sustainable impact on the environment. They not degrade the environment. They help the environment to rejuvenate and recover. So these are called as the green businesses. And let's see. So eligible candidates, they can avail the financial assistance under this particular scheme cost up to 30 lakh rupees and loan will be provided up to the 90 percent now what are the businesses that are eligible for the green business scheme of national schedule cars finance development corporation these are e-rickshaws right compressed air vehicles solar energy gadgets poly houses and repayment has to be made within the 10 years now next organization that we have is national safai karmchari development corporation right they are also going at a conceptual level they are going to perform the similar kind of things similar kind of benefits but there are few small factual differences that occur in every organization and we have to pay attention on those few factual differences right so for this particular uh, organization it was set up in 1997 now with that you should have remembered that the scheduled cars finance development corporation was developed in the 1989 fine now what was the objective of this particular organization obviously we all know that upliftment of the safai karmacharis it is the objective of this organization nothing new about it now it provides skill development and training so assistance in form of 100 percent grant towards a course fee stipend is also given at 1500 per month per candidate fine now these are the schemes And it, it is also providing the support, Mahila Samriddhi, Mahila Adhikarita, Microcredit Finance, General Term Loan, Educational Loan under this. It is providing the support to the Safai Karmacharis, right, or the people who belong to this particular category. Now, let's see this. Education Loan Related Support. See. The same thing that we have studied under the scheduled cars people. Uh, if you are studying in India, then the support which will be provided related to education loan, it will be limited up to 10 lakh rupees. And if you are studying in abroad, then it will be up to 20 lakh rupees. The interest on education loan is reimbursed under the scheme of Ministry of HRD, Government of India, whose family income is up to 4.5 lakh per annum that means see if in, in every kind of loan repayment there are two two components number one is interest payment and the number two is obviously principal payment right so all those families who are having the income of lesser than 4.5 lakh per annum we are going to reimburse them the interest that has been paid by them so this is the now the Obviously, the limits are kind of similar for scheduled caste as well as uh, your Safai Karmacharis. But these are some procedural differences which occur and you should be remembering them. Moving ahead and talking about the green businesses. Under this thing, the support or the maximum thing loan that can be provided is quite less. It is 30 lakhs, not 2 lakhs, rupees 30 lakhs only. Provides loan up to 90% of the unit cost and remaining 10% by the promoter. 10% has to be brought in by the promoter. And next is, what are the loans that can be given for e-rickshaws, compressed air vehicles, solar energy gadgets, poly houses, etc. Repayment is going to be within 10 years. Now, Eligibility criteria, who all are the eligible under the financial assistance of this above scheme? See, under this, Safai Karmacharis and Manual Scavengers, they will be eligible. The age limit is provided. You should be between the age of 18 to 45 years and you should be having someone who is dependent on him or her and they have attained age of 18 years and above for the purpose of financial assistance, right? So, the age-related criteria is there. In education, your interest will be reimbursed if your income is below a certain point, right? So, such kind of eligibility scheme-wise keys, scheme-wise scheme, they have been provided. Now, this is not very important. Next thing is national backward class 
Finance and Development Corporation. So the same similar kind of work this organization is going to do for the backward classes, right? It was established in the 1992 as a non-for-profit organization. Eligibility for loans, who is eligible over here? So members of OBCs, those who are appearing in both state list as well as the central list with annual income ceiling of 3 lakh comprising the target group of the corporation. Scheduled Cast Corporation also had the similar kind of target beneficiaries, those whose income is lesser than the 3 lakh rupees. Fine. One more thing, uh, I know, I hope that you all are aware that there is a central OBC list as well as there is a state level OBC list as well, right? States also prepare an OBC list as per the population of their state. Now the activities, what kind of activities they are financing, agriculture, small business, transportation, technical, etc. The authorized capital remains same just like the Scheduled Gas Finance Development Corporation, 1500 crores. Few of the schemes that have been provided under this particular organization is new Swarnama scheme, right? Under this loan assistance is provided to the women, microfinance scheme is provided is there in the which we are helping the self-help groups. After that, we have small related facilities. Next is Mahila Samradhi Yojana. This is again we are targeting the women SHGs. It recognizes self-help group in which predominantly. Now, as per the National Backward Class Corporation, at least 60% should be the women in an SSG so that it can be recognized as a predominantly female SSG. Fine. Belonging to backward class provided other members belong to weaker sections including scheduled cars, scheduled tribes as well as person with disabilities. Now, there is a technology upgradation scheme. Why this particular scheme is uh, being run by the National Backward Class Corporation? So that we can improve quality as well as the productivity which is being rendered by the members of clusters, right? The interventions for upgradations of the technology augmentation as well as training will be provided. Now, here they are talking about the financial support. So up to rupees 30,000 per beneficiaries will be provided for procurement of machinery, other accessories. National Backward Classes Corporation's uh, share will be 90%. Up to 30,000 per beneficiary for entrepreneurship development and here the share will be 100%. Entrepreneurship development means entrepreneurship related training. So for that 30,000 rupees also can be provided up to 30,000, right? It, the amount can be lesser than that as well. And up to 6 lakh per self-help group with minimum 10 members for development of common infrastructure of marketing, etc. Under this, the National Backward Classes Corporation's share is going to be 80%. Fine. So these, these are the funding related things. Then we are also having a skill development training program under this particular uh, organization. They are going to organize skill development along with the sector skills, uh, sector skill councils, right? National skill development corporation. So with that, they have done a memorandum of understanding in order to provide the skills related thing to the backward classes. OBC beneficiaries who are having the annual family income below rupees 3 lakh, they are going to be eligible over here. In case of economically backward sections, there will be no caste certificate required and their annual income should be less than 1 lakh rupees. So this is the criteria for the economically backward classes. For what? For getting the skill development with the this particular corporation. 100% of total training cost will be provided by the National Backward Class Corporation, right? Now, next we have National Handicap Finance and Development Corporation. Not much is there to study. We will just uh, quickly skip this, right? Just uh, follow the important points and rest of the points can be taken back. Established in 1997, who all are eligible for us? So the members of OBCs as appearing in both central and state list, right? Plus 
This particular corporation, they functions as an apex institution for channelizing agencies. The authorized share capital is a less, is a little less, around 400 crores. Next is Divyangjan Swavlamban Yojana. This particular scheme is being run under your handicapped uh, persons, uh, this particular corporation, National Handicap Corporation. So this is going to provide the concessional loans for the benefit of the persons who are suffering from disabilities. We have already talked about that there is an act for the disabled person, right? <clears throat> who all are eligible under this? So disabled people who are pursuing higher education after class 12. They can be pursuing higher education with UGC, AICT, ICAR, etc. But even if they are pursuing the vocational courses like the ITI diploma or any other thing, then also they are eligible under this particular scheme. Any Indian who is having the disability of 40% or more is eligible. Age should be above 18 years in case of persons with mental retardedness the age would be above 14 years the upper limit under which concessional credit will be provided it is going to be 50 lakh per beneficiaries for the 10 years and then we have just one more scheme called as the vishesh microfinance yojana now microfinance yojana is you provide funds to the microfinance agencies or microfinance institutions and then they give small loans to the beneficiaries. Obviously the rate of interest that they charge is a bit higher. Okay, but this is what they do. Now what is the funding requirement? Unit cost of the project should not exceed 60,000. Your Handicap Finance Development Corporation share is going to be up to 10% and the rest of the 10% has to be brought in by the implementing agencies. Fine. Now next is, and one more thing, why this particular Vishesh Microfinance is being provided? To pursue small businesses. Your business is not much but you need the small amount of money in order to pursue that. So this particular corporation is helpful in that. This has run this particular scheme. Now next we have National Commission for Scheduled Caste. So National Commission for Scheduled Caste, it is a constitutional body which was established by Article 338 of the Constitution. The separate National Commission for SCs, they came into existence in 2004 by amending the Article 338. So earlier there was just one uh, body that was made for the scheduled caste as well as scheduled tribes. But later on this was bifurcated and we got a national commission for scheduled caste. Remember that that is it is a constitutional body. Fine. This is a constitutional body because its existence, its creation has been mandated by the constitution. Now what are the functions and duties? Functions and duties are very uh, simple. To investigate that uh, any kind of atrocities are not happening against scheduled caste. To advise the government on any kind of policy making that is uh, government is doing for scheduled caste people. And apart from that investigate all the cases which are happening against the scheduled caste. Plus, they are responsible for giving the reports to the president that what all the steps for upliftment of the scheduled caste that they have taken. Right. So basically, it is a watchdog of scheduled caste rights, this organization. So like uh, that's uh, how I mentioned it is required to go into the specific complaints. Right. Specific complaints to participate as well as the advice on the planning process of socio-economic development to present to the president annually and at such other times reports. And these reports will be kept in the parliament. Fine. Union and every state government, they shall constitute the committee, uh, they shall communicate to the commission as well as consult them about any kind of uh, changes or any kind of policy making that they are doing for the scheduled caste people. So they are having the powers of civil court. What is the powers of civil court? So these are, have been mentioned. These are the powers of civil court. That means what? They, if they want that, if they want someone to become a witness and they want to call someone that you should be a present in our uh, commission, then that person has to come, right? You see, they can summon 
attendance of any person they can call for any particular document if government department is having any kind of document and this commission requires it so they can call for it you just do not have to remember all of this you just have to remember just like how a civil court functions this particular body also has a similar kind of powers it has got the powers of civil courts uh dear uh, number one thing the government expenditure that happens on the scheme is always a charge on consolidated fund of india never on contingency fund contingency fund is under the president and president uses it for the unforeseen circumstances obviously whatever president has has spent out of contingency fund later on it has to go to the parliament and has to ratified has to get the approval that is separate thing but you remember that all the expense expenditures that we do that the government does out of the government scheme it is expanded out of your uh, out of your consolidated fund of india okay and uh, the next thing that you are asking that uh, expenditure on government scheme is a revenue expenditure or capital expenditure so i'll tell you it differs right it differs the purpose schemes cannot be categorized as a revenue scheme or a capital expenditure scheme schemes does not work like that fine under this what happens is i'll tell you if the purpose of scheme is to provide suppose let's talk about the portion scheme under that we are going to provide the support related to food items fine so this is a revenue expenditure because our government is not building any asset out of it right but suppose there is a scheme for the infrastructure development at the ports correct so that particular scheme is going to be taken as a capital expenditure which has been done by the government fine so the schemes expenditure is going to be revenue one or capital one it depends on the asset creation if any asset is going to be created then that will be called as a capital expenditure and if not then it is going to be called as a revenue expenditure coming back to your question schemes cannot be defined as a revenue or a capital scheme i hope uh, this is clear fine lastly in the uh, national schedule caste commission you have to see the structure so under this there are five members chairperson vice chairperson and the three other persons who are appointed by the president only this much is required now uh, moving ahead and talking about your national commission for the scheduled tribes so this was also established under the article 338 later on we had an amendment in the 89th uh, constitutional amendment 2003 and with that a new article came up 338a and under that national schedule caste corporation or national schedule caste commission was made up now this is your homework you have to tell me that which body has been established under article 338b you have to tell me that which body has been established under the article 338b remember this now next is structure is going to remain the same there are five people vice uh, president vice president as well as the your three other members who are appointed by the president now uh, we call them chairperson vice chairperson not the president or vice president because that can cause the confusion so chairperson vice chairperson and three other members right powers functions and duties they are similar like your national schedule caste fine uh, national schedule caste commission right now next corporation is ncbc this is the body that i was talking about this is the body which has been established under article 338b earlier this was a statutory organization and later on yes good god so we have given a constitutional status to this particular body what with which amendment 102nd constitutional amendment the const uh, the constitutional status has been provided to this particular body the commission is again same thing going to be contain five members chairperson vice chairperson as well as three other members who are appointed by the president powers and functions are the same 
they have to see that uh, investigate the cases of atrocities against the backward classes right they have to report to the government if any problem is occurring plus government is going to consult them on any policy making for the backward classes right and they have got all the rights for investigation of atrocities against the backward classes so these are their powers as well as the function they evaluate every other kind of law that has been made for your backward classes they have the power of civil court everything else is same they have to submit a annual report to the president right then we have a national commission for the denotified nomadic tribes as well right this is this was set up in the in 2003 and what is the function of this particular organization or function is to see that how the living standards of denotified as well as nomadic tribes can be uplifted to identify which programs can help them for their upgradation and lastly national commission for safai karmachari it is a statutory body right and uh, you all know that what are the functions this particular body is going to play next is the rehabilitation council of india it was set up as a registered society the purpose is to provide the facilities to the disabled people correct so you do just have to remember the purpose of this particular rehabilitation council nothing more than that persons with disability maintain a central rehabilitation register etc these are the functions of this particular organization nothing more than that needs to be remembered national trust we have already talked about what is national trust national trust is a statutory body under ministry of social justice it works for the disabled people right so the following schemes that have that these are established under the national trust so interventions for school readiness children who are in the age group of 0 to 10 those are eligible day care facilities for the persons with physical disabilities and registered organization should maintain a ratio of 1 is to 1 for the lower income group including bpl and above lower income group persons with disabilities so you just have to remember that what this uh, organization's purpose is apart from that we have already covered this organization in detail and lastly we have national institute of social defense so this is an autonomous body that has been formed under the society's registration act the national institute of social defense it is the no nodal agency in the field as well as the research of social defense they provide the training as well as see what are the things the crimes etc they are happening what kind of research they can do what how we can defend the dis, uh, disabled population as well as scheduled caste population obc population that means how we can protect the people against the uh, evils who which are there in the society so they mainly perform the work of research and with that we have summed up your uh, schemes um, on ministry of social justice right so i hope uh, you must have understood please watch all the lectures and get the understanding get the idea a broad idea you do not have to do phd right because i am teaching over here so i have to cover all the topics in detail otherwise uh, because the reading requirements of every each and every persons are different so what you can do is just uh, see the lecture see what all i have told is important try to remember them okay and once you will have the first reading you will get an idea that what all these schemes are all about and it is going to help you to remember this so with that thank you so much for joining in and please do not forget to like this video so thank you